Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and today we're looking at Noctua's new 120 millimeter CPU cooler, the NHD12L. This cooler sits in a unique place in Noctua's line of retail coolers. It's a 120 millimeter cooler like the NHU12S, but has a dual heat sink with a center mounted fan like the NHD15S. But what makes this cooler unique is while not two as other 120 millimeter coolers come in at least 158 millimeters high, the NHD12L only measures 145 millimeters high, which means it's not only a great option for smaller form factor builds and cases with limited clearance, but this cooler fits most 4U server chassis. So today we're gonna unpack the cooler, check out what comes in the box, go over the specs and features, demo the installation process on both Intel and AMD motherboards, and finally, test its thermals and sound levels. But before I do that, this is the point where I'm supposed to tell you to consider subscribing to the channel for a wide selection of tech-related and in-depth reviews, demos, and tutorials. The more the channel grows, the more content I'm able to provide. The cooler and accessories are well packaged in almost entirely cardboard with just a minimal amount of single use plastics. The cooler is well protected in a cardboard cocoon and comes with the NFA 12x25R fan pre-installed. The accessory box contains easy to follow instructions, not to a secure firm two mounting system hardware for both AMD and Intel sockets up to and including the latest Intel 1700 socket. There are additional accessories including an installation screwdriver, an extra set of fan clips, a low noise adapter, and a one gram tube of NTH1 thermal compound. The cooler measures 145 millimeters high by 125 millimeters wide by 113 millimeters deep. The dual towers are asymmetrical with the front heatsink thinner allowing for RAM clearance on most motherboards and 100% of AM4 and LGA1700 motherboards according to Noctua. The cooler features five heat pipes and a nickel plated cold plate. The NHD12L comes with a single NFA 12 by 25R fan, which is the round frame version of the NFA 12 by 25 with a rated speed of 450 through 2000 RPM, a max airflow of 60.1 cubic feet per minute and a static pressure of 2.34 millimeters H2O. Using the low noise adapter reduces the max speed to 1700 RPM. The cooler carries not to a standard performance rating or NSPR of 148, making it compatible even with the highest end CPUs like the i9-12900K and the Ryzen 5950X. And finally, at the time of filming, the NHD12L has an MSRP of about $90 US. Installing the cooler on an Intel motherboard involves assembling the back plate by installing the mounting bolts in the position that corresponds to your socket type and securing them with the plastic spacer clips. Install the back plate on the motherboard and add the correct spacers for your motherboard, blue for socket 1700, black for all others. Secure the mounting bars to the bracket using the thumb screws in the orientation that will allow the cooler to be installed in the correct position. Apply the thermal compound, line up the mounting screws so the larger heatsink is at the rear of the motherboard, and secure the tower by tightening the mounting screws a few turns at a time, alternating between the two screws. Installing the NHD12L on an AMD motherboard has a few less steps as it uses the stock AMD CPU socket backplate. Remove the stock plastic mounting brackets and place the gray spacers on each of the four corners of the socket. Secure the mounting bars with the long screws ensuring the curved side of the bars are facing towards the CPU. Apply the thermal compound, line up the mounting screws so that the larger heat sink is at the rear of the motherboard, and secure the tower by tightening the mounting screws a few turns at a time, alternating between the screws. Or, if you're a real pro, you can go with the double screwdriver method. If installed properly, Noctua's mounting system results in as near perfect mounting pressure as possible with a thin and even thermal compound spread every time. For performance testing, I'm using an open air test bench with a Ryzen 7 3700X, all stock settings with just the DDR4 3600MHz DOCP enabled. 
If you want a complete overview of the exact testing procedures I use to test CPU coolers, I've included a time-coded link in the description below that goes over all of it in detail. Now, for comparison, I grabbed my Scythe Mugen 5. This is the best performing 120 millimeter CPU cooler in my inventory, and it's very comparable to the NHD12L in that it's a short, stocky, five heat pipe cooler. It's only a single tower cooler, but if you can find it in stock, it's priced about $30 cheaper. Looking at the numbers, we see both coolers keep idle temps virtually the same at just about six degrees above ambient. While at load, the Noctua kept the average temp over the 20 minute test about 3% lower than the Scythe cooler and kept the peak temp about 1.6% lower. Overall, both these coolers do an outstanding job cooling the stock 3700X. However, coincidentally, both Noctua and Scythe sent me an extra fan for the coolers, so I strapped on the second fan and the Noctua did drop temps by about a full degree or more, while the Scythe saw no statistically relevant change, indicating that the cooling potential of the heatsink is fully saturated with just a single fan. Now, while the NHD12L did benefit from from the second fan it came at a cost of added height as the second fan installed on the front of the cooler sits on top of the ram and can add several millimeters of height to the cooler depending on the height of the installed memory. Now, as Noctua's compatibility guide indicates, the NHD12L has some medium overclocking headroom on the 3700X, so I dialed in a 4.4 gigahertz at 1.4 volt all core overclock. Now, this is more than a moderate overclock. In fact, it's a max OC for my 3700X, but with this single fan installed, the NHD12L handled it, keeping the average CPU temp at 72.5 degrees above ambient with a peak temp of 75 degrees. Now, I'll point out that the Noctua just barely passed the test as the actual peak temp hit was 95 degrees, which is the TJ Maxx for the 3700X, so it was just a fraction of a degree from shutting down. However, adding the second fan did reduce those temps by three full degrees. Now, I already knew from my initial review that the Mugen 5 couldn't handle the peak of 144 watts of power the CPU was drawing while overclocked, but it seems the Noctua's compatibility guide was correct in this case, and there is overclocking headroom on the 3700X while using the NHD12L. This is one seldom spoken of aspect of Noctua's coolers and why I like their NSPR system so much better than a wattage based TDP rating. Quick example, the Overclock 3700X pulled a peak wattage of about 144 watts and the NHD12S just barely passed the stress test while the Ryzen 5950X pulls about 142 watts at stock but the compatibility guy says the NHD12L has best turbo or overclocking headroom. But going off wattage, common sense says it should barely handle the 5950X. However, Noctua takes into consideration many more variables such as architecture, efficiency, and actual OC headroom. The 3700X is a less efficient CPU than the 5950X, and when overclocked, the 3700X is far less efficient, converting much more of that 144 watts into heat. The 5950X has more chiplets spread out across more of the package and has far less overclocking headroom than the 3700X. This is why the same wattage for two different CPUs results in very different amounts of heat generation. For the most part, I found that Noctua's compatibility ratings to be dead on with the few exceptions being sometimes when a motherboard allows the CPU to draw significantly more power than it's typical. More and more wattage into a CPU results in minor performance increases, but significant increases in heat generation. The final test is noise levels, and with the single fan, idle noise levels were virtually inaudible at just 25.5 dBA, and even at load, they were barely audible at just 41.2 dBA, which is actually 0.6 dBA below the background noise level of my studio. Adding the second fan didn't change the idle noise, but did raise the level at its full 2000 RPM to 46.8 dBA, which is actually almost identical to the Mugen 5's peak noise level with just one fan installed. 
All right, let's go over the pros and cons of this cooler and what I think is the best use case for it and where it really has no competition. I'll start with cons because it really only has two minor flaws, the first being the addition of the second fan does add height, defeating the cooler's biggest pro, which I'll get to in a moment. The second is the price. When you're looking at it at just strictly price to performance terms, $90 is expensive when the $60 cooler comes within a few percents of the performance for most stock CPUs you'll install it on. So if that's all you need and the pros I'm about to list don't persuade you otherwise, then well, there are links to the Scythe cooler below, but wait for the pros and top of the list is it's not Tua. Now, most tech reviewers will tell you they don't have favorites when it comes to manufacturers and maybe not all, but most are probably lying. While I can still provide fair and unbiased reviews, I've been working with tech a lot longer than I've been reviewing it. And yes, over the decades, I've developed favorites and not Tua is one of them. They're a no drama company, customer focus. They do what they're great at and don't chase fads awesome customer support and probably the best product support in the industry. For example, with this and most of their coolers, if you need to install it on an older system like an LGA 1366 or 775, Natua will send you the mounting hardware free of charge. And when new sockets are released and you upgrade, Natua will also send you a free upgrade mounting kit. Next pro is of course the super quiet operation. This is by far the quietest 120 millimeter cooler I've tested. It's even quieter than some 140 millimeter coolers I have. Next is size to cooling ratio. This is a relatively small cooler, but it's still capable of cooling almost every retail CPU available. Again, the only issue I can foresee in that regard is the motherboard. While this cooler should definitely handle a stock i9-12900K, some motherboards allow the 12900K to draw up to or over 300 watts, which I will venture to guess is a bit more than this can handle. Final pro which will lead me into the best use case for this cooler is its 145 millimeter height, which while that's great for small form factor builds, most enclosures that can handle this 145 millimeter cooler can handle this 154 millimeter cooler. I'm sure there are some that's not true for, and I'm sure you all will remind me in the comments, but the one specific chassis type that it's not true for is a 4U rack mount chassis. Most, not all, but most 4U enclosures have a CPU cooler height limit of under 150 millimeters, which is why this NHD12L is kinda in a class of its own. Until now, to cool a 4U build, you could go with a server class CPU cooler, which are essentially low profile heat sinks or vapor chambers with high amp, high RPM fans blasting air through them, and they sound like jet engines taken off. Now, there are low profile coolers like this Noctua NHL9 or the larger NHL9 by 65, and in the tower cooler class, you were limited to 92 millimeter or smaller towers. Again, Noctua has some great ones, but none of them are as good as this, and you don't have to cut a window out of the top of your server chassis to make it fit. Not that I've ever done that before, I've, I've done that. So for anyone considering moving your older hardware like a Ryzen 3700X into a rack mount and turning it into a storage server or home lab or whatever, and you're looking for a performant and quiet cooling solution, this just may be the best option for you. <laughs> you see what I did there for you? <laughs> That's funny, you're definitely gonna hit that like now.